coming to you in the all-powerful name of Jesus. Friend, we have a wonderful program for you today. Good gospel music and singing, powerful testimonies. I know that you're going to be blessed, so stay right there. Don't you dare go away. From studios in Akron, Ohio, welcome to the 1909 Club with your host, Ernest Angley. On today's program, you'll enjoy great gospel music and singing. And you'll hear amazing testimonies and accounts of God's miracle power. Bringing you reports of heaven's miracles that people are receiving all over the world through this Jesus World Outreach Ministry. And now your host for the 1909 Club, Ernest Angley. You are special. And you are special to God. My name is the Reverend Steve Millar, and I'm Associate Minister here at Ernest Angeles Grace Cathedral. And I'll be your guest host for today. And if you have a need, call in right now. We have prayer counselors on duty, ready to take your call. And at the end of the program, I'll be taking your request to the throne of grace expecting God to move for you. And those of you in the Cleveland area, it's toll free, 440-842-8043. And the rest of you outside of Cleveland, 330-929-5010. Now we have a great number for you by Angels Grace Cathedral Choir, and they're directed by Barb Durandi. And the title of this song is, I Found Jesus. And I pray that you have found Jesus. round with stone in hand but I heard his voice calling out my name he sent the crowd away in their shame he told me child come and follow me oh his words of love were enough for me I found Jesus never will I be the same no more sin and no more shame I was lost in the night now walking in the love through the crowded place with a desperate soul just to see his face but all it took was a touch of his road would you believe i was made whole i found jesus never will i be the same no more sin and no more shame i was lost in the night now I'm walking in the Never be the same. Never be the same. 
Ah, uh, yes, we have found our best friend around here, and that is Jesus. And I pray that you have found Jesus today. Well, friend, now we have the singing rays, and they're going to be singing, He lifted me out, and God can lift you out of any situation that you may be in, friend. So listen and be blessed. <laughs> And guilty of sin No way to right All the wrongs I have done But through the night I could see A hand was reaching for me He reached so long To rescue my soul Solid rock I stay He lifted me out He lifted me out Of the miry clay Heaven's bells were ringing, ringing And the angels were singing Heaven came down What joy I found When he lifted me out Well, I was lost Well, I was lost No peace within No peace within But then a I have stood at rivers, no, river. no way to cross. With his loving hands, he lifted me up through the power of the cross. He lifted me up. He lifted me out of the fire we claim. Hallelujah on the solid rock I'll stay. He lifted me out of the miry clay. Heaven's bells were ringing, and the angels were singing. Heaven came down. What joy I found when he lifted me out. He lifted me out of the miry clay. Jesus reached to me and he lifted me up. He 
Oh yes, Jesus lifted us out. And just think, friend, God is doing so much for this Jesus ministry. And now we have Jim and Liz Boss, and they're going to tell us what God has done for them. Welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you, you, Reverend Millar. Good to be here. I'd like to start off with the um, scripture, and we're going to talk today how, how God has led us out of the miry clay and set our feet on the true rock, Jesus Christ. Um, it's in Psalms 40, verse 2. He brought me, or us, up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. We were introduced to the Ernest Angley ministry in 1984 mm -hmm. um, through the television program. And, um, but we were very bound in false doctrine, very bound. Um, and it took the power of this Jesus ministry to set us free. Um, and you're from Canada. And we are from, from Canada. Canada. Yes. So, so you're watching the program in Canada? Yes. Correct. Okay. And it would eventually become our church. And we're six hours away, but it's our home church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you make that drive, you know, to come down here, you know. Once a month. Once a month. Yes. And, you know, what a huge blessing to have people to make that sacrifice. You know, you think about it, six hour drive just one way and six mm -hmm. hour drive back, you know, just to come to church, mm -hmm. you know, but. It's very important You know us. where the truth is. We do. Yes. Yes. And we are saved and receive the Holy Ghost and through this ministry. Mm -hmm. um, and then another verse I'd like to share is Romans 1, 16a. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. We were so bound in, in uh, false doctrine. We were raised in a, um, both of us were raised in the same church. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell, um, their teaching was, if you believed and accepted that the baptism of water and you had that experience that you had your ticket to heaven. Mm -hmm. Unless you did something really horrible like murder or something, you basically had your ticket to heaven. So it was, um, it was a heavy burden to break loose from traditions of man. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it was full of deceit. So they didn't, so you didn't believe in living free from sin? No. Never heard of such a thing. No born again experience. No born again experience. We had, there was hundreds of people in our particular church home and I don't believe any of them had the born again experience. And even during communion, they would serve real alcohol for the communion. And there was one person in the whole church that just wanted to have grape juice without alcohol. And people thought she was like, off the wall. It was, that was really sad. It was really sad. And did you believe in uh, being baptized with the Holy Ghost? No, we no. never. No, okay. that actually the church taught when you, re when you were baptized in water as an infant, that's when you received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's what their teaching was. So they didn't teach it was two separate events. You know, no. Just like no. the apostles went to the upper room. Right. You know, and Jesus told them, you know, that they tarry until in Jerusalem until they received that baptism, mm -hmm. that power from on high. And that's what made those disciples, when they received that power from on high and, you know, they were able to have the Holy Spirit speak through them, you know, in a heavenly language, that was the first evidence. Mm -hmm. And then they were able to go out and witness. You know, Jesus let them know that the importance, you know, of the baptism of the Holy Ghost before you even go out and tell people about mm -hmm. Christ. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there was no born again experience. It was just do your best and uh, you were good. You went to church on Sunday. Yeah, as long as you went to church on Sunday. Yeah. It's kind of sad because a lot of people don't know their Bible and right. you know, so they're just listening to that preacher right. and whatever he says pretty much goes, you know, exactly. and they're not checking the scriptures. Right, because we were never taught to spend that time with the Lord. There was no real personal experience, no personal um, prayer time like we have now. Uh, studying the word, none of that. You know, Reverend Angley teaches us that, you know, that, um, that check all the scriptures. Yes. Whatever he's preaching on, mm -hmm. you know, check those scriptures. Make sure it, that it adds up. Yes. And he encourages that because he's preaching the truth. He's preaching right out of that Bible. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why we, we come here. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there was a lot of deceit, um, but there was an honest heartedness about me, Reverend Millar. Um, 
And I was visiting a friend's home one time and I was only seven years old. And um, out of nowhere, his mother said a scripture to me, and it was Matthew 24, 14. And she said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. And now we're blessed to help Reverend Angley take the gospel to the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, because yes. you guys go on the mission trips. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, and we do. We, you've been to, you know, multiple countries. Yes. and. You know, God, you've seen in our crusade services how God has really moved and people were being baptized yes. and, you know, receiving the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and, and also receiving miracles and healings. Absolutely. Exactly, yes. signs following. Um, in Kenya was our very first trip in 1988. And it was really special to me because um, a lot of people believe that you have to get on the platform and be touched by Reverend Angley to get a miracle. And Reverend Angley called the power of God down in the crusade and there was a young boy standing beside me who was deaf. And the reason I knew that, because all of a sudden he started looking around and people <laughs> were gathering around, but he got his miracle mm -hmm. right in the audience. Mm -hmm. The power of God that came down through Reverend Angeli's crusade. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It, it is amazing. When, and when people do receive their miracle, you know, and even if it's in the crowd, you know, there's usually a shout that goes up in the camp because you're yes. so excited. And I'm sure you were excited for <laughs> oh, that young yes, man. That, that really touched you me. You know, when he received Marky. his miracle. Exactly. And the local people knew that young man that he couldn't hear, and here he received his miracle. Yeah. So it was a real that blessing. That trip really changed our lives. Yeah, it did. Because we, we got saved, and then um, that same year, later in the year, we went to, with Reverend to Africa, to Kenya. And we still had a lot of questions because there was a lot of, false doctrine, we had a lot to unlearn and just to learn, obviously, and um, not even asking questions, we got our answers. Mm -hmm. Just being with God's people, the love of God's people, um, the false doctrine started to peel away and God was revealing His truth to us. I think when people come to this church, they realize that there's so much love mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's one of those things that they realize that they're home. You know, exactly. it's like, wow, you know, and yes. even when, I'm sure when you travel from your house and come mm -hmm. down here, you know, wow, we're back at home. You yes, know, absolutely. I, I'm with my Christian's brother, Christian yes. brothers and sisters in Christ, you yes. know, that are just, you know, all bonded together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're the body of Christ. Exactly. Yes. And on my first visit, um, what really struck me was the, the anointing and the love. And, he, and then I heard Bob Durande speak before service, and I'd never in person heard somebody with such authority speak like that other than Reverend Ainge who we saw him at Crusades, but it's the power and the love of God that we mm -hmm. witnessed and felt. Um, it drew us, yeah. So what also happened is um, started indulging in some of the sins of the world. Um, in my teenage years, I, um, I drank alcohol and smoked and, and used marijuana for years, but God blessed me and protected me because even though I used marijuana for years, I only got high one time. And now I look back, I believe that God was looking out and, and protecting me and I thank Him for that. So we, um, we both started dating um, in our teenage years together and what was ironic, we both were searching for God. We wanted a deeper walk with God. Um, but we weren't saved and we really didn't know how to get saved. So we were searching and we got ourselves in, uh, we received a fooling, we'll be honest. We, um, we searched in the wrong places and the devil, we got into speaking in tongues at will. Yeah. And, but still we knew we weren't satisfied. We had that yearning in us. So I had heard that the neighbor had um, the gift of interpretation. So I went over to see him and uh, it was just more deceit, more mm -hmm. deceit. But we started to watch Reverend Angley on television. And he was the only preacher that was giving us truth. And all the churches we visited, all mm -hmm. the mid different ministries we saw, this ministry was the only one. And it was starting to peel away. Mm -hmm. And it was starting to get into us. Yeah. But the sad thing was, I just want to help the people that are in the same situation. For four years, we watched Reverend Angley on television. We went to his crusades, but we didn't let go of all the other ministries. Mm -hmm. 
and we thought we were saved. So you know how in the end of Reverend's programs, he'll say the sinner's prayer, and he'll say, if you meant that prayer, you're saved. Well, we thought we were saved. So for four years, we'd say that prayer, but we didn't mean it. So we were just lifted up in, in self. And then God was mindful. He drew me to come to this church. And that's the first time we've ever been in Ohio. And I came on my own for a special prayer for somebody. Liz was about two weeks away from having a baby, <laughs> our first, our child. So while I was here, God started to show me that I was deceived. Because I thought I had it. I thought I was saved. I thought I had the Holy Ghost, but it was speaking in tongues at will. And there was no real change. It was, we turned a leaf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So during that time, um, it was revealed to me through the Lord that I was deceived, I was saved, I received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other, in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That's the great. real yeah. Holy Ghost and free, yeah. free. Yeah. So back then, cell phones weren't real big or anything. So I waited till I got home <laughs> and uh, I told Liz what had happened. And then she said, I knew we didn't have it. I knew we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And then when I went, it was mountain month. So God gave me my mountain. Mm -hmm. And I told her that a month later, Reverend was having a Holy Ghost rally. And we had our own business at that time. So I stayed home. And then Liz came down. Mm -hmm. It was her turn. Yes. So. so then that was March 1988. So that's 31 years ago we got saved. So. Um, a couple of family members, sister-in-laws, a couple of sisters-in-law sister -in came with me and um, I was ready for the truth because when he came and told me that, I said I knew we didn't have it because there was no power in it. There was, there was no change. It was empty. Mm -hmm. It was speaking in tongues at well. There's, there's nothing to it, right? What did so, you, when you saw Jim, you know, come like, in, was wow. he like, you know, all lit up yeah, in oh, here, yes. you know, oh, yes. and you're just, and you're, you're happy for him, yes. but now you, you want to be filled. Yes, I wanted it. And it's like when you're looking for something and you found it, and we knew we found it, even though we're searching, we didn't really know what we were looking for, and this is, we found this. And ever since that time, we obviously, we don't search anymore because we've found mm -hmm. it. So that was March, 1988. Um, it was a Holy Ghost rally weekend. So um, I got saved that weekend as well, and then uh, was seeking for the Holy Ghost through the whole weekend. Mm -hmm. Sunday night came. I was still seeking, um, still trying to pray through. I was at the altar Sunday night. There were altar workers helping me. And then um, as the church was starting to get quiet, people were starting to leave. I got up um, from the altar and um, the, the helpers left as well. My coat was on the front pew. I started to put my coat on. And I thought, no way. I am not leaving here without the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I threw off my coat, went to the altar, and within a few minutes I had the Holy Ghost. And it was a, a wonderful experience. Yeah. I, I believe that was a little test for you. Yes. You know, you passed. I passed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the, you know, sometimes we have to make sure that we put that extra effort in and yes. be determined. Because yeah. God wants to bless us, yes. but we have to be determined. Mm -hmm. And, you know, exactly. and if you have that honest heart, He's going to bless you. Yeah. He yeah. sure did. And now we're blessed to help people when we go to Africa seek for the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. right. at the Reverend's Crusades. Mm -hmm. It's a real yeah. blessing. When Reverend calls down the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know, you guys are the ones that go out into the crowd yes. and, and help people, yes, you know, do. encourage them to receive the baptism. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Yes, we do. Um, I received a, a wonderful miracle some years ago. Um, uh, I had very high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And um, there was, in my family, there was uh, a lot of my uncles were dying very young. So I used wisdom and I told my doctor and he uh, decided to do a cholesterol test for me. So they have a video on that of my uh, miracle testimony from Africa. So I'll be glad to share that. 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with high cholesterol. cholesterol And uh, my doctor wanted to put me on medication. Before I had the second blood test, I prayed on the television with 
Pastor Reverend Ainsley. I went back for the second blood test. And the doctor was scratching his head looking at the results. And he said to me, what have you done? He said, I've never seen results drop this low without medication. And he's an elderly doctor. And he said, keep praying. He <laughs> yeah, no, this Pray. brings the light. Amen. He said he's heard of people being healed of cancer. Uzula and other things, and he said, keep praying. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's a great testimony, Jim. You yes, know, God just is good. think, you know, God is doing so much through this Jesus ministry, and people are being blessed in they a great are. way. Exactly. Um, so we, we have one daughter, and we, she was raised in this ministry also. And um, when she was around eight or nine years old, she was having uh, nervous problems. So Liz and I went on an eight-day fast, and it ended when we were here in Akron. And Pastor Reverend Angley, he has the gifts of the Spirit. And he was walking down the aisle of the church. And we must have been late that day because we travel, we travel a distance. We usually sit closer, but we were near the back of the church. Mm -hmm. And Reverend was walking. And right when he got to our aisle, he knew nothing of this. He turned and said, uh, your daughter, or he said that you are receiving a nervous miracle. And that was our daughter. Mm -hmm. So God has been so good to mm -hmm. us. He's kept us very healthy all these years, it's been wonderful. We're blessed to have these great services here. And friend, you know, I'd like to invite you to come to our services. We have two beautiful locations in Caga Falls at 2700 State Road and in Akron at 1055 Canton Road, Springfield Township. It all starts with our Friday night miracle service at 7 p.m. at our Caga Falls location. So if you need a miracle or you need a healing, come to our Friday night miracle service and get ready to receive. And then Saturday is our youth service at 7 p.m. at our Akron location at 1055 Canton Road, Springfield Township. We'll have a male and a female speaker and good gospel music and singing. And then back to our Caga Falls location for our Sunday morning worship service at 10 a.m. Then Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we're going to have a glorious time in the Lord. So come and be with us in all the services. I know that you'll be blessed, and the people that you invite, they will be blessed. So at this time, now we have the Cathedral Trio, and the title of this song is, We Will Lift Him Up. And that is our responsibility, is to lift up the Lord all the time, to let people know about Jesus. from heaven miracles healings everywhere his gifts are now in operation the presence of jesus christ is here we're launching out into greater power there's nothing our lord can't do hallelujah we will lift him up singing praise today we will give him thanks and exalt his name we will lift him up, Jesus, King of Kings. We will lift him up, singing praise today. We will give him thanks and exalt his name. He has raised us up on his healing Spirit, leaving all fear and doubt behind. Through the 
kings He has raised us up On his healing wings We will lift him up Let us lift him up We will lift him up Everybody join me We will lift him up Sing and pray today We will give him thanks And exalt his name We will lift him up Jesus King of Kings We will lift him up Praise today, we will give him thanks and exalt his name. He has raised us up on his healing wings. Everybody join me now. We will lift him up, Come sing on. and praise today. We will give him thanks yeah. and exalt his name. We will lift him up, Jesus, King of Kings. His name, he has raised us up on his healing wings. Glory, hallelujah. We will lift, lift him up, Jesus, King of Kings. Ah, oh, yes, we're lifting Jesus up around here. And, friend, if you don't already get the letter from Reverend Ernest Angley. We'll give you this opportunity by calling in right now, and we can send this letter to you, and this letter will bless you in a great way. And then you can also go online to ernestangley.org and read this letter. Or you can call in, you know, we accept all donations, and what a huge blessing that is. And when you give to this Jesus ministry, you are going to be blessed. And we also have the giant little book that you can receive and let them know that you want to receive a giant little book and we will send you one for free, no charge. When you're a partner of this Jesus ministry, it's all about receiving so much from the Lord. You can support this Jesus ministry by going online to ernestangley.org or you can also mail in your support at Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. When you call in your support, we accept all major credit cards. Friend, thank you for being a soul winner and helping us to take Jesus to the world. And now we have the Victory Trio, and the title of this song is I Am Now Ready. I pray that you're ready to receive Jesus in your heart today. So listen and be blessed.
I pray that you are ready for Jesus. Yes. And now we're back with Jim and Liz Boss, and they have wonderful testimonies on how God has blessed them in a great way. I um, just want to tell a little bit about the monthly letters. Um, as you spoke about the letters, uh, those letters are very important to us. We go through them every month uh, together, and um, we read them together and we go through the theme of the month, um, but we also add our own prayer requests for the month. Um, people that we've come across during the month that we want to put on the prayer list, like the gentleman at the gas station or something like that, right? Um, but this, this time um, we put on that we wanted to buy our own home. So we just put that on there and, and uh, sent in the letter. Um, usually we take the letter with us when we come once a month. Um, shortly after that, we got a letter in the mail uh, stating that there was uh, a big sum of money coming to us and it was um, our insurance company had been bought out. So we got our down payment for our home. Well, that's great. Yeah. And, you know, so you save the monthly we letters. We save them. Yes, I and that's what I do all. too. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people in this Jesus ministry save the monthly letter from Reverend Angley. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a great anointing on the letter. Yes. And like you said, you can go back and read through them. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's a letter that encourages you in a great way. Yes, very and, much so. And, you know, to be able for husband and wife to go mm -hmm. through the letters and, you know, that does bless you. It does bless us. Yes. And there's been a lot of answer prayer through those letters. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to go back a little bit. A little story I want to say, uh, tell about is, you know, when God was bringing us through and showing us truth and um, just making himself real to us. So I was about 17 at the time we were dating. And... Um, we attended the youth group from our church uh, together, and there was a youth rally at uh, one of the other churches in our denomination. So we were there for the weekend, and um, uh, one of the end of the rallies, the, the services, uh, we were saying goodbye to each other and before we parted ways. And earlier that day, I had put a fleece out to God and I wasn't even saved, but I put a fleece out to God and said, you know, if Jim is the one for me, um, have him do something that is totally out of the ordinary. And I kind of forgot about it a little bit. And um, as we said goodbye, he said, do you want to pray together before we part ways? And we never did. We weren't saved. We went to the, you know, to church all the time, but we never prayed together. Um, and I started crying. <laughs> he, he says, what are you crying for? So I told him about that, but um, that was very special. You know, so um, we have a wonderful marriage. God put us together, even though we weren't saved. So that was, uh, that was a great experience. And God was really making himself real to us, little, different, little ways along, the, along our journey. Um, another story um, is... Uh, after we were saved, um, we had um, another job. So we had a job opportunity, and um, it was a job for both of us at the same company. And this job um, included a nice country home, rent-free. That was all part of the whole package. Um, it included moving an hour from where we were. So we weren't sure, we, we wanted God's will, and we always uh, sought God's will, not our own will, because um, we always say to each other, God's our high tower, he knows what's ahead. Mm -hmm. um, this, something may look green 
rosy, everything right now, but uh, in the future, we don't know. God, God's our high tower. So um, we, were, we went to the service. We spoke to Reverend before the service, Reverend Angeli, and met with him. And then um, after our, ta our discussion, we, we told him what was going on. And um, after the discussion, we decided, yes, um, this was God's will. And we were excited. So during the service, Reverend came out and uh, started talking about, um, about not specifically about us, but about the situation, how God was blessing. And I have a testimony or a, a prophecy here um, that when Reverend was talking about it, he, he said, um, oh, sorry, I can't find it here. Um, he talked about how God was blessing tithing and blessing the tithers, blessing his people. And, um, sorry, let me find it here. Well, I can tell you Jesus. that, you know, when the prophecies go forth, they come true in this Jesus they ministry. They sure do, they and sure we, do. We've seen it time and time again where, you know, the Lord will speak through Reverend Angeli mm -hmm. and, you know, give a prophecy. And, you know, it always, holds true. It always it comes, to, true. comes to pass. Yeah. And, you know, and it's just one of those things where, you know, some people will, will think, how is that even going to happen? Mm -hmm. But it does. And Reverend uses the example with the plane, you know, how the plane came forth for us. Mm -hmm. And some people, you know, had a hard time believing that they could believe everything else, but they just couldn't believe that we were going to get a plane mm -hmm. to use for missionary work. Yeah, and sure lesson. enough, we have a 747 mm -hmm. SP now. Mm -hmm. so, that's right. So God provides. So that was November 1993. And um, God said, I am moving, thus saith the Lord, I am moving for my obedient. I am moving for those that are pleasing me, pleasing me with holy living, pleasing me with their tithing and giving, pleasing me by showing my love to others and carrying my love to others, carrying a burden for the lost, lost humanity throughout the whole earth. And I will stand by my obedient people in this last hour. The bride is taking the place of my son. She will have all favors, all of the greatness, all of the power of heaven in her favor as she walks in my divine paths. And we were in his divine will and, um, you know, God showed us his path. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. And it was uh, for us. Um, God really showed us the way there. What, what I love is, you know, when you're in God's will, you know, you just, you put all your burdens on to God and God's going to make his way a path, a plain path for you. You mm -hmm. know, when you're yielded to the Holy Spirit, you know, yes, something may look so great over here, mm -hmm. but you're over here. Now, do you go over there? Well, it's just a matter of how the Holy Spirit leads you. You know, we all want God's will because God does know our future. And yes. God knows what's going to happen. You can go over to that other, the, where the grass is greener sometimes, mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, it's not green anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just a short time how it just got, everything got flipped around. Mm -hmm. And then you're in trouble. So you always need to pray for God's will in your life. Yeah, we always do for uh, any big decisions. We always find God's will. And when we uh, bought our home, I spoke to one of the associate pastors, and we found out that it was God's will yeah. for us to buy this home. Mm -hmm. And that all worked out. And a while later, we had a yearning to go on a, on a mission trip. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have the money. And our boss said to us, he says, well, it's just a matter of money. I'll lend you the money. You pay me back whenever. Mm -hmm. So if God wants you to go on a, the mission trips, he'll, he'll make the yes. way. He'll make the way. Sometimes in life, um, we need a little splash of cold water on our <laughs> face, so to speak. And um, when I was in sin, that happened to me. Um, a friend was going to have a party, and he was not allowed to have it if I was attending. And it really bothered me. It really shook me up. And, and shortly after that, another friend told me about being born again and a miracle he received. But we were so in deceit at that time that it took eight years. Mm -hmm. But God is patient. You know, God is patient. I'd like to tell about um, uh, a couple wonderful miracles through the prayer line. Um, we were at a, a family event, and a relative was telling me about somebody who knew, was in the hospital, had four young children, and she was dying, and there was no way things were gonna turn around according to man. And I said, well, I'll put her on our church's prayer list, like I'll call the prayer line. 
And he, um, he kind of like um, smirkingly, you know, a little bit of a laugh, like sure thing kind of thing. So the next time we got together, um, the families, he couldn't get to me fast enough. He mm -hmm. says, you know what happened? Mm -hmm. And uh, God turned everything around, healed this woman, and she's back home with her family. Mm -hmm. God did that through the prayer, Ernest Angley prayer line. It's great that they, they recognize that mm -hmm. too. And yeah. friend, if, you know, you see the tele, excuse me, you see the phone number on the screen and you can call in right now. We have prayer counselors on duty, ready to take your call. And they're prayed up. You know, so whatever your need is, you know, you can call in right now. Or maybe you have a loved one that has a great need in their life. Well, you can stand in the gap. I like to encourage you to call in and for them to receive their miracle or their healing or whatever your need is, you can be blessed through our prayer line. And this is a great testimony that Jim gave, how Jim just called up. He stood in the gap for someone, you know, it was a, a friend of his and, you know, God moved. Mm -hmm. God moved. And then uh, not that long ago, my uh, employer came to me and said, does your church have a prayer line? She knows the power of God in this ministry. And I said, yes. So um, I'd called the prayer line. She had a relative of hers. The pregnancy was not working out good at all. And it wasn't looking good for this child to even survive. So she came to me one morning. She said, did you call, did you get in contact with your prayer list and prayer line? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. So she was so excited. Things had turned totally around. And she showed me a picture a while ago and it was a live, healthy child. Mm -hmm. And she gave God the glory for it. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. And that's what God wants is He wants, when we receive a miracle or, you know, a healing from Him, He wants us to, you know, let people know about it, to give our testimony. Yes. Exactly. And, you know, and when you send your testimony to ErnestAngie.org, you know, what a huge blessing, you huge. know, that is. You know, you can email us to testimonies at ernestangley.org and we'll receive it and who knows, maybe we'll read it on the air. Mm -hmm. I had someone at work as well. Um, a couple of years ago, he went off because uh, he was diagnosed with cancer, had to go through a lot of treatment. Um, so I put his name on our letter, on our monthly letter. Um, so, as the months went by, he was still off on sick leave. And then um, it was probably about a year and a half. You know, I kept praying for him. And uh, about a year and a half, I heard he was coming back to work. Mm. And I was pretty excited about that. And he sought me out. He knew because whenever he called me, you know, give a medical update um, for work, I told him I would be praying for him. When it worked, I was careful, but you know, I told him I was praying for him, and he knew I was praying for him. And every time I see him out on the floor now, on the production floor, he's, um, you know, very encouraging. He knows it was God. He knows God did that, and uh, totally brought him out. Yeah. And, well, and oh, sorry. And now we uh, we're blessed to take this love to the nations mm -hmm. with yourself and Reverend Angley, This power of God. Yes. Uh, we visit the orphanages. So we go to the schools, the yes. daycares, and we're blessed to uh, pray with the blessed cloth and that Reverend Angley prays over. Mm -hmm. And one of the recent trips, um, prayed with a little girl. Some of us were gathered around. One of us used the blessed cloth. Yes. Her friend brought her to us. She did not have speech. Mm -hmm. After praying with the blessed cloth, God gave her her speech. Yes. And you know how we do? The tears started going yes. down her cheek. It's amazing what God does on the mission field through yeah. that blessed cloth. She's yes. about 10 years old, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an exciting time to be, mm -hmm. you know, part of this Jesus ministry, to go over to the mission field, you know, Africa in, you know, we're in Johannesburg and, mm -hmm. you know, we're able to go into the prisons, we're able to go into the hospitals, and like you said, the orphanages, the schools, oh, yes. and even the street work. We go out into the villages mm -hmm. and we'll be able to, to pray with the people. And you'll see when someone has a blessed cloth, and we, you know, each one of our members do, and they'll be lined up. Mm -hmm. They'll exactly. want prayer. They'll yes. see that miracle happen. And then the next person will come up. And actually, we've seen it many times where as soon as the person sees a miracle, they go run back and get their relative yes. Yes. because they know the importance of, you know, mm -hmm. prayer. And you can see on our screen right now, you know, a picture of the blessed cloth. And it's according to Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. And it's all Bible. And Reverend Angie prays over the blessed cloth. And there's a great anointing in the blessed cloth. And our people use it out on the streets. 
And, you know, and people receive their miracles. People receive their healings. And you can call in right now and we'll send you a blessed cloth for free. No charge. Maybe you know someone that's sick and afflicted in their body. Well, God can move in a great way for each one of you. You heard these testimonies today and what all that God has done for Jim and Liz and, you know, what God can do for you. You know, God can change your life, but it's up to you to be that yielded vessel to want God to change your life. All you have to do is just ask Jesus into your heart, you know, and Jesus will change your life. Well, friend, we have another song for you by the Singing Men's Quartet, and the title of this song is Sinless Blood Change My Heart. And yes, sinless blood will change your heart when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart. friend, let the sinless blood of Jesus change your life today. 
All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ into your heart. He will make you a new creature. So pray with me now to ask Jesus into your heart. Say, Oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. You have the healer. Let's get your miracle for you today. Put your hand against my hand on the television screen. This is a point of contact, and we're going to pull down heaven together. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know what their need is. Break their bondage and set them free. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Friend, always look for every sign of improvement. And always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. I love you. Jesus loves you. And you are special to God. Friends, there is great joy and happiness in telling others about the true and living God. Become a partner in this Jesus outreach today and join us in spreading the gospel of truth throughout the earth. Well, till the next time we get together, remember, you are special to God. <laughs>